Greetings, friends and relatives. Well, here is another topic that diametrically goes opposite to what the world believes on it. Is the Christian calling. Well, you remember, you are cordially invited to attend, begins an invitation to a formal dance. It is beautifully printed and goes on to describe the elegant and enjoyable evening to which you are invited. A simple dance or party invitation is easy for us to understand. But many people today do not understand how God invites or calls those he wants into his church. They do not understand the Christian calling. That is, they do not understand whom God calls or how or why. Such a lack of understanding is saddening for those God now makes the heirs of, to salvation are commanded to walk worthy of their calling, Ephesians 4, 1, and to make their calling sure, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. How can we do this if we don't even understand what our calling is. Yet we need to not remain in darkness about this vital and foundational subject. The Bible teaching is plain. The Bible here is the basic Bible doctrine. When God calls a person, he invites him into his church to help the church perform its great commission of preaching the gospel to the world, Matthew twenty four fourteen, and to prepare to rule with Jesus Christ and teach God's way, in the world to come. Revelation chapter 2 verse 27 and 26 and Revelation 3 verse 21. That is the main purpose for being called now. A person called at this time is also one of the relatively few to whom God is now offering the chance for salvation. God alone decides who shall be called by opening a person's mind to understand his truth. Now, of course, the usual teachings of this world are that most professing Christians feel that God is now calling everybody to salvation. Others think that God calls to salvation those who wish to be called or those who seek to be called by deciding to give their hearts to the Lord. Still others feel God must surely call only the best society has to offer, the good people, so-called good people, who try to obey God as they see him. A few feel that a person has not been called unless he has had some type of special religious experience, such as speaking in tongues. Certain preachers must feel that uh, they have their, the power to call people since they tell people at tent meetings to come forward and profess Christ. And amazingly, all these common teachings in the Protestant world, in nominal Christianity, and in all these common impressions are proven false by the Bible. What is the Bible teaching? Well, although many people use the biblical expression and profess to have been called, in effect, it has been two years since I was called to the Lord, for example, few people have ever stopped to realize and understand what they're saying. The New Testament was written in Greek, and the English is only a translation. Nonetheless, the English word, call, well reflects the process described in the Bible. To be called is to be invited or hailed by God, much as a person might telephone a group of friends and invite them to a party. Notice the illustration in Matthew 22, verse 1 through 14. The kingdom of heaven, Christ said in a parable, is like a certain king who arranged a marriage, a marriage for his son and sent out servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. These, these are verses 2 and verse 3. Quite plainly, then... God is calling us uh, through an in, as a form of invitation. So God's calling is an invitation, you see. In Galatians 1 verse 6, it says it is a calling, an invitation to the grace of Christ. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says it is a calling from darkness to, li to light. So briefly, being called means that one is invited to be a member of God's church with all the responsibilities that entails and the hope of salvation. The Greek word translated church in the New Testament is ecclesia, which literally means called out once. Hence, when we are called, we become part of the called out once, that is, the church. And uh, here another important point must be stressed. The common teaching that God is calling all now that is, that he is trying to save the world now, is utterly false. When asked by his disciples why he spoke in riddles, Christ said in Matthew 13 verse 11, 
because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. That is, the disciples had, uh, had been called to know the truth, but others had not been so called. Now, this is not to say that the others will never be called, just that they will not be called in this era or this lifetime. Those who are called now, a relative few, are called to help preach the gospel as a witness, Matthew twenty four fourteen, and to prepare to be teachers and rulers in the world to come under Christ when God will begin to call humanity as a whole, Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. God's calling is in part an invitation to salvation now with his church, who then are now being called. Well, Christ makes clear in John 6, 44. Here, surely to the astonishment of the religious teachers of this world, Christ states, no one can come to me, that is, no one is invited or called, unless the Father who sent me draws him. So no one can be called unless God himself decides to call him or her. Astoundingly, this means that God does not call everyone, not those who wish to be, nor those who try to be, nor those who are talked into joining churches by well-intentioned, by misguided preachers, nor just the good, so-called good among people. Rather, he calls those he decides to call for his own reasons. Notice how Paul states, in, uh, states it in Romans 9, where he discusses the this precise topic, Romans 9 verse 16. So then, it, once calling, is not of him who wills, he who wants to be called, nor of him who runs, he who even tries in his own way, but of God who shows mercy. Paul is not saying those now not now called will not be saved, only that their chance for salvation is not in this age but later. Still, we cannot help but wonder upon what God bases his decision to call or not to call a certain person. Well, God does state certain qualifications and gives some examples for, from which we can glean answers. The most poignant of scriptures on this question is 1 Corinthians 1. Uh, chapter 1 and verses 26 to 31, where Paul writes, For you see your calling, brethren. God has not chosen the, f God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the, the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things, and the things which are despised, and the things which are not. Literally then, God picks those who are foolish, weak, and despised, in the eyes of the world, that is. He does so in order that those who are saved are humble and don't take the credit themselves. He does it so all can see that if God is able to save the weak now, he must surely be able to save the strong later. Now, to be sure, God looks for other qualifications as well, such as the natural abilities he wants for certain future jobs, and a willing attitude. Hence, we see how Joseph and Moses and David and many others were used by God in accord with their natural abilities and will fill places in his kingdom that will utilize the same abilities. Probably one of the most important questions asked by those who consider this, this topic is, am I being called by God? How do I know? Well, please notice John chapter 10, verse 1 through 28. In these verses, Christ likens the true believers to sheep, with himself as the shepherd. He says the true sheep will know their spiritual shepherd because they will hear his voice and understand his words. Especially, please notice verses 3 through 6, verse 14, and verse 26, 27, and 28. The point of the analogy is this. One whom God is calling will have his mind opened to understand when he hears God's truth. One who is not being called may hear the words, but like a foreign language he does not understand, those words will not be mixed with understanding and belief. God calls then by opening one's mind to understand and believe the truth when he or she hears it. Are you being called? You are if you are understanding and believing the truth. Such is the clear meaning of many verses, 
such as Isaiah 6, verse 9 and 10, Acts chapter 28, verse 23 through 27, and Romans chapter 11, verses 8 through 10. Of course, once God has opened the mind of a person to understand spiritual knowledge, he must bring that person into contact with the truth so he or she may hear the call. So, yes, if you hear the voice, the voice of the shepherd, speaking through these programs, indeed, and if you understand them, well, yes, you are being called. The key verses through about this doctrine of Christian calling uh, are there in the Bible for us to understand because this topic is so fundamental and it pierces through so many commonly held wrong beliefs that it's important to highlight a few important verses we may remember or mark in our Bibles. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10, Christians are commanded to make their calling and election sure. Matthew 22 verse 1 through 14, God's calling is his invitation to become part of his work and prepare for salvation. Now, John 6, 44, no one is called unless God initiates the call. John chapter 10, verse 1 through 28, and Matthew 13, verses 10 through 17, God calls by opening our minds to understand the truth, and those not called are spiritually blinded. In conclusion, friends, yes, it can be an enjoyable thing to be invited to a social gathering or party, but it is joy unspeakable to be among the few now invited, called by God to fulfill the Great Commission and qualify for salvation and eternal life as children of God.